Simone Lucy Ernestine Marie Bertrand de Beauvoir French Sim de Beauvoir Listen the 9th of January 1908 to the 14th of April 1986 was a French writer intellectual existentialist philosopher political activist feminist and social theorist Though she did not consider herself a philosopher she had a significant influence on both feminist existentialism and feminist theory De Beauvoir wrote novels essays biographies autobiography and monographs on philosophy politics and social issues she was known for her 1949 treatise The Second Sex, a detailed analysis of women's oppression and a foundational tract of contemporary feminism, and for her novels, including She Came to Stay and The Mandarins. She was also known for her lifelong relationship with French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre. <laughs> Early years Family <laughs> 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 Simone de Beauvoir was born in Paris on 9 January 1908. Her parents were Georges Bertrand de Beauvoir, a legal secretary who once aspired to be an actor, and Françoise de Beauvoir née Brasser, a wealthy banker's daughter and devout Catholic. Simone's sister, Hélène, was born two years later. The family struggled to maintain their bourgeois status after losing much of their fortune shortly after World War I, and Françoise insisted that the two daughters be sent to a prestigious convent school. De Beauvoir herself was deeply religious as a child, at one point intending to become a nun. She lost her faith in her early teens and remained an atheist for the rest of her life. Topic. Education De Beauvoir was intellectually precocious, fueled by her father's encouragement, he reportedly would boast, Simone thinks like a man. Because of her family's straitened circumstances, de Beauvoir could no longer rely on her dowry, and like other middle-class girls of her age, her marriage opportunities were put at risk. De Beauvoir took this opportunity to do what she always wanted to do while also taking steps to earn a living for herself. After passing baccalaureate exams in mathematics and philosophy in 1925, she studied mathematics at the Institut Catholique de Paris and literature, languages at the Institut Saint-Marie. She then studied philosophy at the Sorbonne and after completing her degree in 1928, she wrote her Diplôme d'études supérieures roughly equivalent to an MA thesis on Leibniz for Léon Brunskvig the topic was Le concept chez Leibniz. The concept in Leibniz. De Beauvoir was only the ninth woman to have received a degree from the Sorbonne at the time, due to the fact that French women had only recently been allowed to join higher education. De Beauvoir first worked with Maurice Merleau Ponty and Claude Levi Strauss, when all three completed their practice teaching requirements at the same secondary school. Although not officially enrolled, she sat in on courses at the École Normale Supérieure in preparation for the Aggregation in Philosophy, a highly competitive postgraduate examination which serves as a national ranking of students. It was while studying for the Aggregation that she met École Normale students Jean-Paul Sartre, Paul Nizan, and René Mahieu who gave her the lasting nickname, Castor, or Beaver. The jury for the aggregation narrowly awarded Sartre first place instead of de Beauvoir, who placed second and, at age 21, was the youngest person ever to pass the exam. Writing of her youth in Memoirs of a Dutiful Daughter she said, Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 my father's individualism and pagan ethical standards were in complete contrast to the rigidly moral conventionalism of my mother's teaching. This disequilibrium, which made my life a kind of endless disputation, is the main reason why I became an intellectual. <inaudible> <inaudible> Middle years From 1929 to 1943, de Beauvoir taught at the lycée level until she could support herself solely on the earnings of her writings. She taught at the Lycée Montgrand, Marseille, the Lycée Jean d'Arc, Rouen, the Lycée Molière, Paris, 1936 to 39. During October 1929, Jean-Paul Sartre and de Beauvoir became a couple and after they were confronted by her father, Sartre asked her to marry him. One day while they were sitting on a bench outside the Louvre, he said, "Let's sign a 2-year lease." Near the end of her life, de Beauvoir said, "Marriage was impossible. I had no dowry." So they entered a lifelong relationship, one Sartre and de Beauvoir always read each other's work. Debate continues about the extent to which they influenced each other in their existentialist works, such as Sartre's Being and Nothingness and de Beauvoir's She Came to Stay in Phenomenology and Intent. 
However, recent studies of de Beauvoir's work focus on influences other than Sartre, including Hegel and Leibniz. The Neo-Hegelian revival led by Alexander Kojave and Jean Hippolyte in the 1930s inspired a whole generation of French thinkers, including Beauvoir and Sartre, to discover Hegel's phenomenology of spirit. Personal life Beginning in 1929, de Beauvoir and Jean-Paul Sartre were partners for 51 years until his death in 1980. De Beauvoir chose never to marry or set up a joint household and she never had children. This gave her the time to advance her education and engage in political causes, to write and teach, and to have lovers. Perhaps her most famous lover was American author Nelson Algren whom she met in Chicago in 1947, and to whom she wrote across the Atlantic as, My Beloved Husband. Algren won the National Book Award for The Man with the Golden Arm in 1950, and in 1954, de Beauvoir won France's most prestigious literary prize for the Mandarins in which Algren is the character Louis Brogan. Algren vociferously objected to their intimacy becoming public. Years after they separated, she was buried wearing his gift of a silver ring. However, she lived with Claude Landsman from 1952 to 1959. De Beauvoir was bisexual and her relationships with young women were controversial. Former student Bianca Lamblin originally Bianca Bienenfeld wrote in her book Memoirs d'une jeune fille d'Oranger English, Memoirs of a Disturbed Young Lady, that, while she was a student at Lycée Molière, she had been sexually exploited by her teacher de Beauvoir, who was in her thirties at the time. In 1943, de Beauvoir was suspended from her teaching job, due to an accusation that she had seduced her 17-year-old Lycée pupil Natalie Sorokine in 1939. Sorokine's parents laid formal charges against de Beauvoir for debauching a minor and as a result she had her license to teach in France permanently revoked. In 1977, de Beauvoir, Sartre, Roland Barthes, Michel Foucault, Jacques Derrida and much of the era's intelligentsia signed a petition seeking to abrogate the age of consent in France. Notable works She came to stay De Beauvoir published her first novel She Came to Stay in 1943. It is a fictionalized chronicle of her and Sartre's sexual relationship with Olga Kosakovich and Wanda Kosakovich. Olga was one of her students in the Rouen Secondary School where de Beauvoir taught during the early 1930s. She grew fond of Olga. Sartre tried to pursue Olga but she rejected him, so he began a relationship with her sister Wanda. Upon his death, Sartre was still supporting Wanda. He also supported Olga for years, until she met and married Jacques Laurent Bost, a lover of de Beauvoir. In the novel, set just before the outbreak of World War II, de Beauvoir creates one character from the complex relationships of Olga and Wanda. The fictionalized versions of Beauvoir and Sartre have a menage a trois with the young woman. The novel also delves into de Beauvoir and Sartre's complex relationship and how it was affected by the menage a trois. She Came to Stay was followed by many others, including The Blood of Others, which explores the nature of individual responsibility, telling a love story between two young French students participating in the resistance in World War II. Topic. Existentialist ethics In 1944 de Beauvoir wrote her first philosophical essay, Pyrrhus et Sinas, a discussion of an existentialist ethics. She continued her exploration of existentialism through her second essay The Ethics of Ambiguity 1947. It is perhaps the most accessible entry into French existentialism. In the essay, de Beauvoir clears up some inconsistencies that many, Sartre included, have found in major existentialist works such as being and nothingness. In The Ethics of Ambiguity, de Beauvoir confronts the existentialist dilemma of absolute freedom versus the constraints of circumstance. Topic. Les Temps Modernes At the end of World War II, de Beauvoir and Sartre edited Les Temps Modernes, a political journal which Sartre founded along with Maurice Merleau-Ponty and others. De Beauvoir used Les Temps Modernes to promote her own work and explore her ideas on a small scale before fashioning essays and books. De Beauvoir remained an editor until her death. Topic. Sexuality, existentialist feminism and the second sex 
The second sex, first published in French as Le Derieme Sex, turns the existentialist mantra that existence precedes essence into a feminist one, one is not born but becomes a woman. With this famous phrase, Beauvoir first articulated what has come to be known as the sex gender distinction, that is, the distinction between biological sex and the social and historical construction of gender and its attendant stereotypes. The fundamental source of women's oppression, Beauvoir notes, is its historical and social construction as the quintessential other. De Beauvoir defines women as the second sex because women are defined in relation to men. Aristotle referred that women are female by virtue of a certain lack of qualities. De Beauvoir also points out that St. Thomas referred to the woman as the imperfect man, the incidental being. De Beauvoir asserted that women are as capable of choice as men, and thus can choose to elevate themselves, moving beyond the «immanence» to which they were previously resigned and reaching «transcendence», a position in which one takes responsibility for oneself and the world, where one chooses one's freedom. Chapters of the Second Sex were originally published in Les Temps Modernes, in June 1949. The second volume came a few months after the first in France. It was very quickly published in America due to the quick translation by Howard Parshley, as prompted by Blanche Knopf, wife of publisher Alfred A. Knopf. Because Parshley had only a basic familiarity with the French language, and a minimal understanding of philosophy he was a professor of biology at Smith College, much of de Beauvoir's book was mistranslated or inappropriately cut, distorting her intended message. For years, Knopf prevented the introduction of a more accurate retranslation of de Beauvoir's work, declining all proposals despite the efforts of existentialist scholars. Only in 2009 was there a second translation, to mark the 60th anniversary of the original publication. Constance Bord and Sheila Malavani Chevalier produced the first integral translation in 2010, reinstating a third of the original work, in the chapter, Woman, Myth and Reality. Of the second sex, de Beauvoir argued that men had made women the other in society by application of a false aura of mystery around them. She argued that men used this as an excuse not to understand women or their problems and not to help them, and that this stereotyping was always done in societies by the group higher in the hierarchy to the group lower in the hierarchy. She wrote that a similar kind of oppression by hierarchy also happened in other categories of identity, such as race, class and religion, but she claimed that it was nowhere more true than with gender in which men stereotyped women and used it as an excuse to organize society into a patriarchy. Women who do not follow the domestic norm are looked down upon in society. Beauvoir is explaining that woman referred as the other. She states, what is a woman? The fact that I ask it is in itself significant. A man would never get the notion of writing a book on the peculiar situation of the human male. But if I wish to define myself, I must first of all say, I am a woman, on this truth must be based all further discussion. A man never begins by presenting himself as an individual of a certain sex, it goes without saying that he is a man. It would be out of the question to reply, and you think the contrary because you are a man, for it is understood that the fact of being a man is no peculiarity. 34 to 35. As for man there is no need to define what is to be a man, there is no reason because they identified themselves as the superior part. Man represents both the positive and the neutral, which doesn't need to be explained or defined, and it is self-explanatory. Thus humanity as male and man defines woman not in relation to herself but as relative to him, she is not regarded as an autonomous being. 35 Men are the default setting and women are considered a recessive gender. He is the subject, he is the absolute, she is the other. 35 It is like an asymmetrical comparison, but masculine and feminine aren't asymmetrical. Are there women, really? Most assuredly the theory of the eternal feminine still has its adherents who will whisper in your ear, even in Russia women are still women, and other erudite persons, sometimes the very same, say with a sigh, woman is losing her way, woman is lost, 34, de Beauvoir refers, to the, eternal feminine, it can be what defines some kind of spiritual being that connect all women to each other, de Beauvoir argued that women have historically been considered deviant, abnormal. She said that even Mary Wollstonecraft considered men to be the ideal toward which women should aspire. De Beauvoir said that this attitude limited women's success by maintaining the perception that they were a deviation from the normal, and were always outsiders attempting to emulate normality. She believed that for feminism to move forward, this assumption must be set aside. 
Despite her contributions to the feminist movement, especially the French women's liberation movement, and her beliefs in women's economic independence and equal education, de Beauvoir was initially reluctant to call herself a feminist. However, after observing the resurgence of the feminist movement in the late 1960s and early 1970s, de Beauvoir stated she no longer believed a socialist revolution to be enough to bring about women's liberation. She publicly declared herself a feminist in 1972 in an interview with Le Nouvel Observateur. In 2018 the manuscript pages of Le Deriam et Sex were published. At the time her adopted daughter, Sylvie Le Bonne de Beauvoir, a philosophy professor, described to the New York Times, de Beauvoir's artistic writing process. Beauvoir wrote every page of her books longhand first and only after hired typists. The Mandarins Published in 1954, The Mandarins is set after the end of World War II and won her France's highest literary prize, the Prix Goncourt. The book follows the personal lives of philosophers and friends among Sartre's and de Beauvoir's intimate circle, including her relationship with American writer Nelson Algren, to whom the book was dedicated. Algren was outraged by the frank way de Beauvoir described their sexual experiences in both the Mandarins and her autobiographies. Algren vented his outrage when reviewing American translations of de Beauvoir's work. Much material bearing on this episode in de Beauvoir's life, including her love letters to Algren, entered the public domain only after her death. Topic. Later years De Beauvoir wrote popular travel diaries about time spent in the United States and China and published essays and fiction rigorously, especially throughout the 1950s and 1960s. She published several volumes of short stories, including The Woman Destroyed, which, like some of her other later work, deals with aging. 1980 saw the publication of When Things of the Spirit Come First, a set of short stories centered around and based upon women important to her earlier years. Though written long before the novel She Came to Stay, de Beauvoir did not at the time consider the stories worth publishing, allowing some 40 years to pass before doing so. Sartre and Merleau-Ponty had a long-standing feud, which led Merleau-Ponty to leave Les Temps Modernes. De Beauvoir sided with Sartre and ceased to associate with Merleau-Ponty. In de Beauvoir's later years, she hosted the journal's editorial meetings in her flat and contributed more than Sartre, whom she often had to force to offer his opinions. De Beauvoir also notably wrote a four-volume autobiography, consisting of, Memoirs of a Dutiful Daughter, The Prime of Life, Force of Circumstance sometimes published in two volumes in English translation, After the War and Hard Times, and All Said and Done. In the 1970s de Beauvoir became active in France's women's liberation movement. She wrote and signed the Manifesto of the 343 in 1971, a manifesto that included a list of famous women who claimed to have had an abortion, then illegal in France. Some argue most of the women had not had abortions, including Beauvoir. Signatories were diverse as Catherine Deneuve, Delphine Serig and de Beauvoir's sister Poupette. In 1974, abortion was legalized in France. Her 1970 long essay La Vies the Coming of Age, is a rare instance of an intellectual meditation on the decline and solitude all humans experience if they do not die before about the age of 60. In an interview with Betty Friedan, de Beauvoir said, No, we don't believe that any woman should have this choice. No woman should be authorized to stay at home to bring up her children. Society should be totally different. Women should not have that choice, precisely because if there is such a choice, too many women will make that one. It is a way of forcing women in a certain direction." In about 1976 de Beauvoir and Sylvie Le Bon made a trip to New York City in the United States to visit Kate Millett on her farm. In 1981 she wrote La Cérémonie des Adieux a farewell to Sartre, a painful account of Sartre's last years. In the opening of Adieu, de Beauvoir notes that it is the only major published work of hers which Sartre did not read before its publication. She contributed the piece, Feminism, Alive, Well, and in Constant Danger, to the 1984 anthology Sisterhood as Global, the International Women's Movement Anthology, edited by Robin Morgan. After Sartre died in 1980, de Beauvoir published his letters to her with edits to spare the feelings of people in their circle who were still living. 
After de Beauvoir's death, Sartre's adopted daughter and literary heir Arlette Elkaim would not let many of Sartre's letters be published in unedited form. Most of Sartre's letters available today have de Beauvoir's edits, which include a few omissions but mostly the use of pseudonyms. De Beauvoir's adopted daughter and literary heir Sylvie Le Bon, unlike El Caim, published de Beauvoir's unedited letters to both Sartre and Algren. De Beauvoir died of pneumonia on 14 April 1986 in Paris, aged 78. She is buried next to Sartre at the Montparnasse Cemetery in Paris. Prizes <inaudible> 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 Prix Goncourt, 1954 Jerusalem Prize, 1975 Austrian State Prize for European Literature, 1978 Works List of publications non-exhaustive L'Invite English, She Came to Stay novel. Pyrrhus et Sinas 1944 nonfiction Le Sang des Autres 1945 English The Blood of Others novel Who Shall Die 1945 Tous les hommes sont mortels 1946 English All Men Are Mortal novel Pour une morale de l'ambiguïté 1947 English The Ethics of Ambiguity nonfiction America Day by Day 1948 English 1999 Carol Kosman translator and Douglas Brinkley forward nonfiction Le Sex 1949 English The Second Sex nonfiction L'Amérique au jour le jour 1954 English America Day by Day Les Mandarins 1954 English The Mandarins novel Must We Burn Sade 1955 the Long March 1957 nonfiction Memoirs of a Dutiful Daughter 1958 The Prime of Life 1960 Force of Circumstance 1963 A Very Easy Death 1964 Les Belles Images 1966 novel The Woman Destroyed 1967 novel The Coming of Age 1970 nonfiction all Said and Done 1972 Old Age 1972 Nonfiction When Things of the Spirit Come First 1979 Novel Adieu A Farewell to Sartre 1981 Letters to Sartre 1990 Journal de Guerre September 1939 to January 1941 1990 English Wartime Diary 2009 a Transatlantic Love Affair, Letters to Nelson Algren 1998. Diary of a Philosophy Student, 1926-27 Cahiers de Yoines, 1926-1930 Selected translations Patrick O'Brien was de Beauvoir's principal English translator, until he attained commercial success as a novelist. Beauvoir, Simone 1997. Quote, quote, introduction. To the Second Sex. In Nicholson, Linda, The Second Wave, A Reader in Feminist Theory, New York, Routledge, pp. 11-18, ISBN 9780415917300. Philosophical Writings Urbana, University of Illinois Press, 2004, edited by Margaret A. Simons et al., contains a selection of essays by de Beauvoir translated for the first time into English. Among those are, Pyrrhus and Sinias, Discussing the Futility or Utility of Action, two previously unpublished chapters from her novel She Came to Stay and an Introduction to Ethics of Ambiguity. Topic see also Art Shea Simone Weil List of women's rights activists Topic References Topic Sources Apignanese, Lisa, 2005, Simone de Beauvoir, London, House, ISBN 1-904950-09-4 Bear, Deirdre, 1990. Simone de Beauvoir, A Biography. New York, Summit Books, ISBN 0-671-60681-6 Rowley, Hazel, 2005. Tete Tete, Simone de Beauvoir and Jean-Paul Sartre. New York, HarperCollins. Suzanne Lalure, 1969. 
Le Malentendu du Deuxième Sex with collaboration of Professor Dreyfus. Paris, University Presses of France, Presses Universitaires de France. Fraser, M. 1999. Identity without Selfhood, Simone de Beauvoir and Bisexuality, Cambridge and New York, Cambridge University Press. Axel Madsen, Hearts and Minds, The Common Journey of Simone de Beauvoir and Jean-Paul Sartre, William Morrow & Co., 1977. Hélène Rauch, 2001-2002, Trois Conceptions du Sexe, Simone de Beauvoir entre Adrien Sahouquet et Suzanne Lalleur, Simone de Beauvoir Studies, N Degree 18, pp. 49-60. Seymour Jones, Carol 2008. A Dangerous Liaison. Arrow Books. ISBN 978-0-09-948169-0. Simone de Beauvoir, Marguerite Yorsenar, Natalie Sarrote, 2002. Conference Elizabeth Badinter, Jacques LaSalle and Lucette Finas, ISBN 2717722203. Hubbard, Jean, 1969 Feminist Theory and Simone de Beauvoir, by Toral Moi, 1990 de Beauvoir, Simone 2005, Introduction from the Second Sex, in Cud, Anne E., Andreessen, Robin O., Feminist Theory, a Philosophical Anthology, Oxford, UK Malden, Massachusetts, Blackwell Publishing, pp. 27-36, ISBN 9781405 1,116,619. Apignanesi, Lisa. Simone de Beauvoir, London, Penguin, 1988, ISBN 0140087370 Bear, Deirdre. Simone de Beauvoir, A Biography, New York, Summit Books, 1990. ISBN 0671606816 Francis, Claude. Simone de Beauvoir, A Life, A Love Story. Lisa Nesselson, Translator. New York, St. Martin's, 1987. ISBN 0312001894 Oakley, Judith. Simone de Beauvoir, New York, Pantheon, 1986. ISBN 0394747658 External links Bergoffin, Deborah. Simone de Beauvoir. In Zalta, Edward N. Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Simone de Beauvoir. Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Works by or about Simone de Beauvoir at Internet Archive Madeleine Gobet Spring Summer 1965. Simone de Beauvoir, The Art of Fiction No. 35. Paris Review. Guardian Books, author page, with profile and links to further articles. Petrie Luconin. Simone de Beauvoir. Books and Writers Victoria Britain et al. discuss Simone de Beauvoir's lasting influence, ICA 1989. Mim Udovich, a contributing editor for Esquire, the 6th of December 1988. Hot and Epistolary: Letters to Nelson Algren by Simone de Beauvoir. The New York Times. Retrieved the 9th of June 2012. Louis Menand, the 26th of September 2005. Stand by Your Man: The Strange Liaison of Sartre and Beauvoir. Book review of the republished The Second Sex by Simone de Beauvoir. NewYorker.com. Retrieved the 9th of June 2012. Murray, Jenny. The 22nd of January 2008. Simone de Beauvoir. Woman's Hour. BBC Radio 4. Simone de Beauvoir. Great Lives. BBC Radio 4. The 22nd of April 2011.